country dirty. The communities are dark. The opposition People's National Party has been uh, criticizing the KCMC's building approval processes and decisions given recent controversial developments. But in January 2022, the PNP councils at the KCMC resigned from the Building and Planning Committee uh, because of what they call its lack of integrity, transparency, and efficacy. Now, how do we take the opposition seriously in its criticisms when PNP councils have been refusing to do their jobs to provide oversight on this important committee? Let, let me take that. I was the first member of the PNP to resign from the committee. Why? Immediately after a building meeting, I got a call to announce to me that I am blocking a developer. Similarly, a colleague of mine on the other side got a similar call and who had to get security. I am not going to put my life at stake for rapacious and dishonest staff members who would have seen it necessary to alert a developer that we had question about his or her approval. We are pro-developers and we will support developers, but we will not be placed in the pocket of any developers. It is not about all costs. It's about to do what is right, do it principle, and we will stick by that. If you notice also that since we have removed ourselves from there, look at the multiple lawsuit. Look at what the mayor said that he's investigating himself. I've never heard that in my life. And so, yes, you can deem us reneging our responsibility, but until the state can provide sufficient security for us to do our job, I am taking the way of preserving myself and my family, not to expose myself to rapacious and cruel developers. Just to add to that, let it be clear that in 2019, there were local and international partners who came together to, 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 to formulate the building codes. Until today, no regulations have been put in place. And so they are toothless, toothless. No enforcement can be taken because you have not you have not laid those regulations. Thank you so much. Team JLP or Butter. Jamaica, as someone who has been on both sides of the political aisle, in this regard, I can speak with authority on this one. My friend in council is disingenuous. As a matter of fact, the person who posed the question, I may want to add that not only in 2022 did the PNP resign from the building committee, but I believe it was in 2013 or 14, while the People's National Party's administration was in office in the KCMC, the PNP also resigned from itself. <laughs> the building committee resigned, yes, Jamaica, under the People's National Party. When you charged us with the responsibility to take decisions on your behalf, may I dare say, that the building committee is not just about developers. The remit far extends beyond that. But if my friend would have sat in those committee meetings, he would have learned much. The reality is the checks and balances have been put in place. They speak so much about the three strategic laws. Those laws has assisted us to also restructure our operations so that we can effectively serve you with transparency and accountability. And yes, the issue to which my colleague alluded, the mayor of Kingston was correct. It was our internal mechanisms that detected the flaws in our system. Thank you so much. Social media also has burning questions. Nika? Thanks, Janella. That's so true because our question is via direct messaging from Kingston. Andrew wants to know what will be done to establish a more transparent process of awarding contracts or subcontracting government funded jobs versus the current process by which friends and alleged dons are being awarded. Team JLP, you have the first shot at this one. Okay. With regards to the process of awarding contracts 
each corporation has a procurement committee. No, no councillor chairs that procurement committee. So there is a clear and transparent process in the awarding of contracts. We have to, we have to submit a quarterly report to the Integrity Commission surrounding our contract award process. So it is, it is a clear process. We, we do not, based on the process, it, is, it, it does not allow for this level of corruption that is being perceived by the public. And when you look on what it is that persons have to do, so when you look in the Sunday papers, um, generally you will find that advertisements are put out where persons make submissions and they have to, the applicant, persons who are making the submissions, they themselves have to satisfy certain requirements, especially when the contracts are at particular dollar values. So we have also in, in the internal systems, the internal auditor. So that's a check and balance that exists in relation to the award of contracts. We have the auditor general who can step into any municipal corporation and in fact has stepped into municipal corporations to ensure that the process that is put out in respect to the award of contracts, that it complies with the laws that exist and that it is fair and transparent. And now we have the Integrity Commission. They can do the same. And when we take note that the Integrity Commission's Act was passed by the Jamaica Labour Party, we stand firm that there will be no corruption in the award of contracts or the giving of contracts to dance. Thank you so much, Team PNP. Let me put that to the test. Since my colleague went there, I don't intend to make this debate about her, but you sat with us and you was critical of how things were managed. For example, the mayor's personal assistant is now the procurement manager. We have not had consecutive meetings either of the accounts committee or the, the, the properties committee. We as PNP will say to the Jamaican people, our accountability, our inclusiveness will ensure that you, you are at the table. Let me go further, let me go further. The statute declare that you should share your findings and your budget to the people for five years. We have not had one. The IG report has not been tabled in, 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 in the commission. We are saying the most deceptive and the most dark administration is this one. And I make no apologies for it because how dare you to talk about transparency when you have no audit report, you have no internal audit report, you have not shared the damning report from the Auditor General, neither have you shared the report from the Integrity Commission, but you're investigating yourself. I find it a clear mockery. One of the major issues with transparency in the local government process is the systematic exclusion of people, of the community, from the process. The three laws you spoke about entrenched in the local government process a role for citizen participation. And when you have neutered the local public accounts committee, when you have single-handedly... And uh, we would have to end it right there. We are in a democratic process. And the fact that a person does not have a PhD does not disqualify one from participating in the democratic process. You have many persons who represent communities well. And I will start with my father. My father served as a councillor for many years in Montego Bay. And he became the mayor. He rose to be the president of the Senate. And my father did not have a tertiary education. But many persons would not understand that because he was eloquent in his speech. He performed with integrity. He performed in the service of the people. And if the person has that characteristic, go out to do service, service beyond what was said by Eve, my friend, 
put your life on the line if needs be because you put yourself in that position, asking the people to vote for you, for you to serve them. Do not remove yourself from the process. We saw that in St. James when two PNP councillors abandoned the people after they were elected. So, qualification, integrity, honesty, emotional, emotional intelligence, and a seriousness about work, working for the people. And I can commit that the candidates at the Jamaica Labour Party has on its slate going into this local government election are persons with that type of characteristic. Acad academic, academics, we are stickler for education, and academics is important, no doubt. But we also believe that experiential learning has value. And so we will not discount someone Thank you so much, for the absence of that. Hi, I'm Dr. David Costa, the Dean at the local government level for nine years and I've now served at the parliamentary level for some 16 years. I'm very clear that there must be cert a certain level of ac academic achievement to be able to read some of the bills that we are presented with, to be able to assist with legislation, to be able to uh, help your people and to guide them in the right path. Yes, on the ground learning is important. Yes, your passion for people is critical because no matter how much education you have, if you don't love people like them on that side, you won't go very far. Because when you talk about deception, it was my friend in the last debate who said that the most deceptive government was the Jamaica Labour Party government, who also <laughs> said that she is no part of the deception team. So I want to know is that she has sold out to the deception because tonight I know that the People's National Party remains that party that is going to field a cadre of strong, effective, and hardworking councillors who will have the minimum qualification that is required to get the job done. Competence is important. I want to make a really clarify a point that was made by my colleague. No two PNP councillors deserted the council. That's not true. There were extraneous circumstances that we know that. So no two PNP councillors deserted so the council. Much. Thank you so much. Giovanni has the next question for Team PNP. This is some what of a follow up from, our, from the question from our viewer, Andrew, who asked a question about contracts and tendering. A February 2020 augmented a contract. Now, the effect direct contracting procurement procedures was applied rather than the limited tender procurement procedures. Now, what policies are being put in place to root out this long-standing practice that facilitates nepotism and cronyism in local government? You know, one of the things that we have agreed as a team that we will do is to publish our books in the newspaper. So the people of Jamaica can be a part of what happens in the local authorities. You must be able to move along with us and see where your tax dollar is being spent. We are going to put all the checks and balances in place to ensure that the people of Jamaica, through participatory democracy, come on board and hold us all accountable by allowing our PDCs, our CDCs, our community-based organizations to be a part of the accountability process. They must know where we are spending their money. They must be able to ask questions and they must be able to get the answers. We are committed to doing this. We are further committed to ensure that the public is integral in what we do. And so they will be at the table to have oversight about how we apportion things. And that is critical as per the statute. Section 30D set out clearly how we manage resources at the local level. What we are not able to do is to guarantee that the administration to my right would allow it to happen. For five years, they have not engaged the public. For five years, we have not had an approved budget from our parent ministry. We are guaranteeing in our contract with the people that those become the norm. 
I want to reinforce the point that is being made here. Every time this point comes up, my colleagues laugh. My colleagues to my right I'm referring to. They laugh at the point of citizens' participation. It is very important to hold the parish council accountable. We will reinstate the local public accounts committee to give some insights into Thank what the budgetary so process Team is at Jeffy, the local government your level. Rebuttal. Thank you very much. I'd just like to explain to my colleague why we are laughing. We are laughing at the ridiculous arguments that are coming from that side. You are all over the place. Absolutely. In answering the question, though, Hanover Municipal Corporation, we are aware of all the things that have transpired there. The best of systems can be in place, but when you have corrupt persons managing those systems, then that is when you have these problems. A mayor in, my, in, in, in Hanover has had to resign because she gave a contract. A PNP mayor at the time gave a contract to a family member to buy a fridge for her mother. If that is not corruption, I don't know what is corruption. So we have the systems in place, but we have the corrupt persons on that side managing those systems and manipulating them. And that is one of the problems. They are over there. All they are speaking to is lies and deception. And they are answering no questions. And I want to ask Jamaica a question. Would you replace Desmond McKenzie with Natalie Nita Garvey? Absolutely. I'm sure the answer is no. Every because day they are day over there just waffling and waffling every day, of, every day of the week. They, they, they look are also so, so, so question, are you going to put in place to root out nepotism and cronyism? So are you saying, therefore, that you don't intend to implement any? Madam Moderator, is that when you look in a municipal corporation, the, the systems are there, the policies are there, as I went down, we have the... Thank you. Thank you so much. We have some questions now from social media. Nika.